to work on is the violin two part of Night Shift by Richard Meyer. We're going to be taking a look at section um, by section. We're going to play through it and then break it down. First one I'd like to look at is measure one through five. You see in that first measure that we have B natural to C sharp, D, E, E to B natural, and then we have B flat in measure four. One, two, ready, and. Something to be mindful of is in that first measure, we go from B natural to C sharp, a whole step. We're really used to just playing C natural, which is touching B natural. But in this case, it's a whole step away from B natural. Now if we take a look at measure four, we have a B flat. Normally our first finger is on the first tape in measure four, but in this case it's going to be somewhere in between that first tape and the nut of the instrument. So this that slightly elevated portion near the scroll. It's gonna, your finger's gonna be placed somewhere closer to that, not on top of it, but closer to that, and behind or away from the first tape. So B natural, B flat. play through that one more time. Just pay attention to my hand on the whole steps. Okay. Another tip is that in measure three, we have first finger E on D string, first finger B on A string. Those are what's called a fifth. And you can basically put your finger on both strings and you don't even have to roll it at all. But in case you have smaller fingers, all you need to do in that case is just slightly move your finger over. Okay, so in measure four we have... Okay, so the B flat in measure four, both of those quarter notes are going to be accented. How are we going to accent them? One of the ways that I like to do that is I like to play very fast at the beginning of each note, put some space in between them, and also press the stick into the bow. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm pressing the stick into the bow using my index finger on my right hand, or my bow hold. You need to make sure you have a proper bow hold in, in, in order to do this properly. Make sure your first knuckle is wrapped around the winding and your pinky is near the screw and it's not straight like this. And you don't want to have a bent thumb either. Nice and curved and leaning towards the tip. Okay, so I'm going to just show you how to do that accent. So we're going to, we're going to set, press, pull, set, press, pull, set, press, pull. Okay, you can go ahead and try that on an open string or that B flat right there. And in order to get to that pizzicato nice and quickly, I don't recommend wrapping your bow in your hand. If you need to do that, that's fine, but a really simple way to do that is just lift your index finger and get to the left side of the string in order to play that. So make sure you have space in between the B flats. Um, kind of punch the beginnings of the note, pressing into the stick, into the string with the stick. And then the pizzicato, just lift your index finger. The next section we're going to be taking a look at is measures 14 through 19. What we're going to be focusing on is playing the um, eighth notes short and forte, but not rushed. Two, Ready, and... Okay. So the way that we're going to play those eighth notes slightly separated and also forte is doing what I call the brush stroke. We're just kind of brushing the string. We're really not going to be using our arm as much it's going to just mainly come from opening and closing our elbow, but we're not moving it in this direction. So you're not, you know, rowing. You're opening and closing your elbow, but also look at my wrist when I'm doing the brush stroke. It really is centered around your wrist and fingers. You're, I'm kind of flexing my fingers, almost like a jellyfish or octopus, you know? Let me do that. Let me just do it on open string for you. I'm 
also rolling the stick away from me so that I'm able to brush the string more efficiently and not have it bounce. So you can roll the stick away from you. So I would kind of, when you roll the stick, your wrist comes up naturally and so does your elbow, so that's okay. Also stay forte, so you can still press into the string. measure 16 we have a half step in between B natural and C natural we were used to playing second finger on the second tape but in this case your second finger is going to be touching your first finger C natural will be touching B natural okay and then I measure 17 we do B natural open A, back to B natural, and then we do B flat. So that's the one we were talking about that's closer to the nut of the instrument. So half step in between the nut of the instrument and your first tape. One, two, ready, and. The next section we're going to be doing is measures 30 through 33. We've got a lot going on in these measures. We've got some 16th notes, some 8th notes, and also some 8th rests. Um, it looks a lot harder than it is, so what I want us to go ahead and do is say the rhythm out loud, and I will be clapping the 8th rests. Ready? And 1 and a 2, and 4, and 1 and a 2, and 4, and 1 and a 2, and 4, and. Okay, now let's go ahead and play it. Keep in mind this is all going to be on the string, but you're using as minimal bow as you can to produce a good sound. Remember, you're going to be pressing into the string shorter the note so you can get the same amount of sound production out of it. So remember, you're going to be using your index finger and it's going to be a faster version of the brush. But it's going to be on the string. So it's a lot of wrist movement, okay? You're not, you're not rowing, you're not using your arm forward or backward. It's going to be opening, closing your your hand and your wrist because I'm not moving my elbow at all. Okay. And another thing I like to do is and set and set and set, just so that you know that you're going to be ready for those eighth notes going into the next set of sixteenths. One, two, ready, and. we're going to be taking a look at is measure 56 until the end of the piece. What I want us to go ahead and pay attention to is in measure 57, the last two beats, we have a crescendo there. It kind of looks like a carrot. Um, it's crescendoing from piano all the way to forte on the downbeat of 58. What we're going to do right there is in the last two beats, we're going to use more and more bow. We only have three notes to do that on, so in order to make a big difference, we need to make whatever we're playing before the crescendo sound even quieter. So if you take a look at 56, and the second half of that measure, we have... I want you to pretend there's a balloon that's tied to your bow, and that it's just barely lifting it off the string. We're going to be brushing, but we're going to be doing so in a really quiet way. So you're going to bring your bow closer to the fingerboard. make sure that you're getting the right bowings is writing them in and also using a little bit more and um, on the um, slurred notes so up down up down up down it's kind of a tongue twister but after we get done playing those it's kind of sudden you have to not only cross the string but you also have to from B natural to B flat, B natural, B flat. So let me do that again. I'm going to play it with a metronome now. I'm going to start on the downbeat of 56. So 
and rest. Okay, and use those uh, quarter rests in 58 to reset your bow and get a really nice accent on the downbeat. Let me play it one more time. Ready, two, ready, and. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that we're going to make sure that those eighth notes also have space in between them. They are piano, but we're still brushing the strings, so we want a little bit of space in between them. It's not going to be legato, it's not going to be like... No, we want space in between them. But the slurs, you obviously don't want space in between them because they are supposed to be legato, the slurs. Okay, let me go ahead and play 56 until the end with my metronome. One, two, ready, and. Rest, rest. Okay, and measure 60 and 61. Um, just remember what we talked about um, right at the beginning, actually, measures four and five. It's the same concept. You want to punch the beginnings of those notes by pressing your index finger into the bow so that it presses into the string. So punch, punch, and then just lifting up your index finger. Get to the left side of the string to play those pizzicatos clearly, okay? Well, that concludes today's video. I'm happy practicing to you all, and good luck.